after the bake tool is done installing NS3, let us run our first NS3 example. Under this directory, we'll go to a source and NS3.26. And over here, we'll have what we call the WAF tool, which is the build tool for NS3. Whenever we execute WAF, it will, it will check for changes under the directory scratch and build the projects there. And before we run it, we need to uh, run WAF configure. Basically, this is a necessary step before we run every program, uh, uh, before we start running programs. It's a th thing that you do only once. And we're done here. Let us run a, an example called WAV, uh, w uh, Scratch Simulator. Scratch. Scratch. Simulator. Now, since this is the first time we run NS3 here, it needs to go ahead and compile all the necessarily libraries for NS3 to cover all the libraries, all the uh, network components. And so we have to wait for it just for the first time for our first uh, program execution. And then we'll be able to just do it without going through these. Okay, and this is the output it prints. It's like a hello world. It's called Scratch Simulator. Let us now create a new, some new work under the Scratch directory. Let's descend into Scratch and create a directory there. So we have subdire and scratch directory. We don't want to run things straight from the main directory. We want to create directories for them because sometimes we have we have uh, multiple class files, C++ files that we our work depends on. Sometimes we want to make a class library, you know, a class here, class there, components. So that to simplify it, we'll create my example example here. Now let me copy from the NS3 uh, examples tutorial. Let me copy second.cc. And I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this to my directory here. Sorry. I'm missing my dot. Example, and I'll call it uh, second dot cc. Uh, okay, I need to say copy. So cp. Okay. Now, if I list the file under example, I will see second cc. Let me go back to the directory root directory for ns3 just running waf will compile that code which is a file named second.cc under the folder example you can see it here being compiled and now to run it we have an example here to run it we don't write second cc we write example which is the name of the directory. And that's how NS3 does it. Now, if there are multiple files, it will look for the main, the one with main function and run it. So we only have one file to have the main function in it. We'll run this. 
and this is the output of the file. In addition, it did create packet capture files, which can be opened by Wireshark, so that we can do packet analysis using tools like Wireshark. We can also run the program with visualization if it's if it has some visual components. And uh, to do this, we'll do dash dash viz. We want to make sure we have a window running. Oh yeah, hold on a second. Let me fix this. For Windows, there's limited functionalities, but we might need to uh, install this thing called uh, Xming, which is an X server, and configure an X server to receive these requests for windowed application. Let's try this again because the visualizer here, which is a live visualizer, Python visualizer, will use a window. Now we should expect the window to come up. Because I'm in full screen mode here, the window is here, and uh, I could simply uh, run the simulation. It'll show some visualization. This is one way to do visualization. The other one is by creating uh, XML files uh, in your code. Basically, you could uh, you generate uh, visualization files in XML format and then analyze them and visualize them using the NetAnim tool. I think this is done. There are no events after two seconds, so we'll just stop this. And there you have it. This is how you run your first NS3 programs through the command line. Thank you.